Hello and welcome to the show. I am Joe Top Hat. Sequels are really big these days. It seems like just about every movie that comes out of Hollywood is a sequel. This could be a good or a bad thing, depending on the movie. Franchises such as Harry Potter and Star Wars generate a ton of sequels. Whereas, movies like Ghostbusters and Bill and Ted only get one. And yet, some, like Who Framed Roger Rabbit, don't get any, despite the many attempts to do so. So, who killed Roger Rabbit 2? To answer this question, let's go back and find out how Who Framed Roger Rabbit got made in the first place. In 1981, the book Who Censored Roger Rabbit was first published. By the way, that's author Gary K. Wolf as Eddie. As for Roger, he is this stuffed toy that Wolf had especially made for the cover. Although the book was by no means a bestseller, an advanced copy was sent to Disney president Ron W. Miller, who purchased the film rights for $25,000. Making Who Framed Roger Rabbit proved to be difficult from the start. Although there had been many movies over the years that had live actors interact with cartoon characters, none were even close to the scale that Who Framed Roger Rabbit required. These early tests don't look as impressive as what we would end up getting. Another problem that plagued production was that Warner Brothers, Paramount, and Universal Studios wouldn't grant permission to use their characters. To add insult to injury, Miller couldn't even get a director interested in doing the movie. In 1984, Ron Miller was ousted from Disney by Michael Eisner, Frank Wells, and Jeffrey Katzenberg. According to author Gary K. Wolf, the new heads of Disney canceled every project that was in development under Miller. The only exception to this was Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Katzenberg wanted to rejuvenate Disney's animation legacy, and he felt that Roger Rabbit would be the perfect project to do just that. As for getting other studios to loan out their characters, Michael Eisner contacted his friend Steven Spielberg to help produce the film. With Spielberg's reputation as king of the box office, securing the rights to other studios' characters wouldn't be a problem. He agreed to help out on the condition that his production company, Amblin, would co-own the rights to the characters. Back to the Future director Robert Zemeckis was brought in to direct, and Richard Williams was hired on as an animation director. Premiering on June 22, 1988, Who Framed Roger Rabbit proved to be the hit Disney needed. With this newfound success, Disney and Amblin immediately made plans for a sequel. The only problem was that the earliest they could release one was 1992. And since Robert Zemeckis was off making Back to the Future 2 and 3, it could take even longer. Wanting to keep Roger Rabbit in the public eye, they decided to make a series of theatrical shorts. On June 23, 1989, the first Roger Rabbit short, Tummy Trouble, premiered before Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. This proved so successful that the following year, a second short, Roller Coaster Rabbit, was released with Dick Tracy. This is where Spielberg's co-ownership proved to be problematic. You see, he wanted Roller Coaster Rabbit to be shown before the Amblin film Arachnophobia, since Tummy Trouble was believed to have helped the box office returns to Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Eisner ignored this request, which I'm pretty sure he later come to regret. You see... Spielberg took this as an insult. 
So when Disney began production on the next short, Hair in My Soup, he shut it down. The images you are looking at are all that remains of this ill-fated short. Officially, his reason for doing so was because he didn't like the story. Though let's be honest, Spielberg did it out of spite. For the next two years, Disney proposed other Roger Rabbit shorts like Clean and Oppressed, Beach Blanket Bay, and Bronco Bust and Bunny. Spielberg turned all of them down. Boy, talk about being petty. The third short, Trail Mixup, was eventually made in 1993. Unlike the first two, this short was attached to a movie both Disney and Amblin produced. A far off place. As recently as 2013, three more shorts were proposed Real Render Rabbit, Roger Rabbit Returns, and The Birds, all of which were co written by Roger Rabbit creator Gary K. Wolf. It's 2018, and none of these have been made. Now that I've gotten the shorts out of the way, let's focus on the sequel. How were they going to do it? The ending to Who Framed Roger Rabbit was so conclusive, there doesn't seem to be any way they can continue the story. Well, originally, they were going to produce a sequel called Roger Rabbit 2, Toon Patrol. Written by Nate Molden, son of World War II cartoonist Bill Molden, Roger Rabbit 2, Toon Patrol, was to take place during World War II. The plot revolved around Roger growing up on a farm in Kansas with a human family called the Randalls. On his 18th birthday, he learns that he's a toon rabbit and goes off to Hollywood to try to find his long-lost mother. On the way, he becomes friends with a live-action human named Richie Davenport, an inspiring actor who, like Eddie, doesn't care for toons, and meets Jessica. Before becoming the glamorous nightclub singer we all know and love, Jessica Krupnik, her maiden name, was to have worked as an actress for a radio station. She was to have a live-action roommate named Randy Rowan, who'd be a love interest for Richie. They both get kidnapped by their boss, Otto Green, who's a Nazi spy, and forced to be like Tokyo Rose. Roger recruits his fellow Toons to rescue his future wife and learns that Bugs Bunny is his father. Eddie was to have a cameo, which I find disappointing. And I'm also kind of iffy on the revelation that Roger's dad was Bugs. But other than that, I think Roger Rabbit 2 Toon Patrol would have made a fun tribute to World War II cartoons. Once again, Spielberg turned down the project, but his reasons for doing so were a little more nobler. You see, director and Schindler's list caused Spielberg to go through a personal revelation. He felt that making a comedy with Nazis would be disrespectful to Holocaust survivors. I think the only way it would have been disrespectful is if the Nazis were made into the good guys. I do, however, respect Spielberg's reasons, even if I don't agree with it. In 1997, a new script for Roger Rabbit prequel called Who Discovered Roger Rabbit was being written. The search for Roger's mother, meeting Jessica, and the Richie Davenport character were all retained. Instead of the World War II setting, the movie was meant to take place on Broadway. Famed composer Alan Menken was brought in to write the songs. As for the animation, the characters were going to be rendered in CG rather than the 2D effect of the original. They even made some test footage. I have to say, Roger looks good in CG. Sadly, the project was shut down, this time by Michael Eisner. Although he approved the script, 
he was bothered by the fact that the movie was going to cost a hundred million dollars to make. Since Disney at the time had been losing money on sequels, Eisner saw no reason to invest so much in the project. So, who killed Roger Rabbit 2? The men who brought him to the big screen in the first place. Michael Eisner and Steven Spielberg. But this isn't the end of the sequel attempts. In 2013, Gary K. Wolf announced that he and a producer friend are working on a proposal for a new buddy movie starring Roger Rabbit and Mickey Mouse entitled The Stooge. Unlike the original movie, The Stooge was to be all animated and only feature Disney characters. Like the proposed prequels, The Stooge was to explore how Roger and Jessica met. It was also going to showcase five different Disneyland theme park locations. So far, no word has been made on how far this project got. As cool as a Mickey and Roger movie would be, placing Roger in a completely animated environment would take away some of his charm. The main complaint I have about all these prequel ideas is that Eddie is either given a cameo or no role at all. Despite Roger's name in the title, Eddie is really the central character. I'm not sure any movie could work without them. Bob Hoskins was a huge reason why Who Framed Roger Rabbit worked. I'm not so sure how well another actor could pull off what he did. In 2016, Robert Zemeckis gave a bleak outlook for Roger Rabbit 2, saying, The current corporate Disney culture has no interest in Roger, and they certainly don't like Jessica at all. So, I guess we'll never get Roger Rabbit 2, huh? Though, in a way, we already have one, just not as a movie. In 1991, Gary K. Wolf wrote, who p, p plugged Roger Rabbit, which retconned the original book as a dream Jessica had. Disney does own the film rights to this book, but, well, you already know how that turned out. Though out of print for many years, the book is now available on Amazon. In 2013, Wolf wrote yet another book called Who Whacked Roger Rabbit? So, if you need a Roger Rabbit sequel, I highly recommend them. There was also a comic sequel called The Resurrection of Doom. Though, the less said about it, the better. As I said in my second video, I think they should follow the example set by Ghostbusters. Like Roger Rabbit 2, Ghostbusters 3 was a sequel that spent many years trying to get off the ground, without success. In 2009, Ghostbusters, the video game, was released. Starring the original cast, the game served as the third movie fans had been wanting. In many ways, it's even better because it stars you as a rookie Ghostbuster helping out Peter Ray, Egon, and Winston. Charles Flasher, the voice of Roger Rabbit, has been on record of saying that he'd love to reprise his role for a sequel. So, it wouldn't be a problem to get him on board. But what about Eddie? In this case, we should look towards the example set by Back to the Future, the game. Michael J. Fox, for whatever reason, couldn't reprise his role as Marty, so they got an actor who sounded exactly like him. I'm sure there's an actor out there who sounds exactly like Bob Hoskins. It would also be pretty cool if Toontown was featured as a world Sora, Donald, and Goofy go to in the Kingdom Hearts game, though I'm not holding my breath for it. The only other thing I can think of is if they do a remake 
that's closer to the book. The problem with doing that is, well, who framed Roger Rabbit is way better than who censored Roger Rabbit. There's a reason why Gary K. Wolf retconned his own book. As much as it sucks that we'll most likely never get a Roger Rabbit 2, we should be grateful we got one. The book it was based on was obscured, even when it was brand new. It was difficult to get off the ground. Everyone who worked on it said it was the hardest movie they ever made. And there was always that fear that production would shut down. Yet somehow, Who Framed Roger Rabbit was able to survive all that and go on to not only be a beloved movie, but a groundbreaking one as well. Movies like Jurassic Park and Wreck-It Ralph owe their very success to the path Roger Rabbit paved. I know it's a little late, but happy anniversary, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, and may you enjoy Furthy more. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments section what you guys think, and don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later.